In our first story, Roads and Highways Minister Chrissy Amwakwata has pledged that the roads destroyed by floods in the Upper West Region will be quickly fixed. Addressing journalists as he toured affected communities, he expressed relief that no life was lost and urged the chiefs and the people of the region to be strong, whilst governments take steps to fix the roads. Now, eight municipalities and districts have been cut off from the regional capital, with some residents also cut off from their district capitals. Including all the noble chiefs to be strong, know that presidency, president, and the government will not allow any part of this country to go through suffering. And we do not want to see any part of our country cut off from the rest. Yes, what has happened is unfortunate. What has happened could qualify to be described as a disaster. It has affected a lot of uh, facilities, particularly the road infrastructure. But everybody should know that what has been destroyed is not beyond human solution. It's not beyond human uh, uh, capability. And the government is behind every part of this country, including this great region. Yes, there has been massive destruction, but the affected roads are going to be fixed in a record time. The government is going to mobilize all available resources to fix what has gone wrong. You're live on Joy News today. Let's go straight to the phone lines and speak to Rafiq Salam, who has been speaking who has been traveling with the minister. Rafiq, if you can hear me, uh, let's first of all find out how the people are faring. Um, has the situation changed in any way? Right, we will soon be speaking to Rafiq Salam, but before we do that, let's speak to the Upper West Regional, let's hear from the Upper West Regional Minister, um, Hafiz bin Salim. He has come to see the situation for himself. So as the necessary measures to be put in place to redeem the situation. So I have the pleasure to welcome Honorable Minister for Roads and Highways and officials of this ministry to the upper West. My uncle, you are welcome. Live on Joy News today, let's move to other stories and we will bring you back to the Upper West Region um, later in the bulletin. Now, the University Teachers Association of Ghana has been slapped with a 3,000 Ghana City fine by the Labour Court here in Accra for failing to file some documentation. The Labour Court said that this was in contravention of Section 214 of the Court's rules. Now, Kojo Mensah Brampa was in court for Dom News and he joins us via Zoom with some updates. Um, Kojo, if you can hear me, run us through what happened in court today. We are all aware that University Teachers Association of Ghana, Utah, uh, went on strike against SEC. So National Labor Commission went for an injunction uh, wanting to stop them from the strike action. So today the case was called at Labor Court 1 here in Accra. And uh, uh, when the case was called, it, it, the university teachers were supposed to have filed some processes, legal processes, so that the judge would be able to hear the case. But after going through their documentation, it was realized that they have breached some of the documentation. So the case could not proceed due to Utah's inability to complete the process. In, in that case, uh, National Labor Commission lawyer argued that since Utah has wasted everybody's time today, they were asking court, the court, the judge to uh, 
uh, award a cost of 10,000 Ghana cities so that next time when they uh, find the process, they will, they will go through and see what the right thing that has to be done so that they will not waste anybody's time. But the Utah lawyer pleaded that the, uh, and no, the agency of the situation was such that time was not on their side. The reason they were unable to uh, go through the normal procedure. So they were asking the court to uh, award a cost of 500 Ghana cities. But a certain judge, in his own discretion, decided to award 3,000 Ghana cities as a cost for their failure to file the uh, necessary legal processes. Case has been adjourned to Wednesday, that is 19th August, for hearing to be done. So what I want to understand is that this does not have anything to do with the lecturers going back to the classroom, right? The lecturers are still on strike, basically. Not at all. They, this has nothing to do with the, uh, uh, them calling off the strike. They are still on strike. So uh, the cost awarded them has nothing to do with calling off the strike. Thank you very much, Kojo Mr. Brampa, for joining us. He's an Adum News reporter who was in court for us. Now, the Ashanti region has seen its COVID-19 fatalities shoot up in the last three weeks with 47 new deaths being recorded. It comes despite a decline in the rate of infections. The cumulative deaths jumped from 297 on July 25 to 344 on August 16, 2021. Regional Health Director Dr. Imano Kojo Twinkwine told a weekly COVID-19 media update the situation is enough reason for the public to be wary of the dangers of COVID-19 and comply with the safety protocols. On the ongoing rollout of the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccines in four hotspots districts in the region, um, he said 11,000 people have already received their jabs as of August 15, 2021. Situation in Ashanti region. So from 20th of July up to 14th August, we've recorded new cases of 392 new cases. 392 cases from 20th of July to 14th August. That gives us a total cumulative cases in Ashanti region since the onset of the pandemic as 19,000. 19,622. Those who have recovered so far is 18,460. Unfortunately, we've lost 344. And our active cases, as of today, is 818 cases. 798 are being managed as a home base. And then we have 20 on admission in our treatment centers. Out of those who are on admission, 12 are severe, one is moderate, three critical, four critical, and then three are mild cases. So if you look at the total number of districts that so far reporting new act active cases, it's 32 out of the 43 districts. Kumasi Metro alone accounts for almost 20% of all the cases. And the cumulative incident is 332 per 100,000 cases. So if you look at this critically, so for Ashanti region, we've had three waves. The first wave, that is at the beginning of the pandemic, and then the second wave soon after the Christmas holidays. And then this is the third wave. We are now in our third wave. But if you look at the trend, you realize that the number of cases are going down. Dr. Tinkra also briefed the public on the rollout of the Johnson & Johnson vaccines. The challenges that we've gone through to get you these vaccines. So we are hoping that at least the coverage will be 100% for the districts. The districts that are doing the vaccination were selected 
purposeful. Because if you look at the trend in Ashanti, that is where we have the hot spots. So though we have cases in other areas, but we believe that when we vaccinate in these hot spots, it will help us to contain the outbreak better. So we've selected Asokwa, Kumasi Metro, Kwadasu, and Uforikrum. And that's where we've started the vaccination. We've been given 50,000 doses. And I believe that uh, by Friday, we are very hopeful that we will give out all the 50,000 doses. I must assure you that uh, plans are far ahead also to get us more vaccines. So as we get the vaccines, we will also make sure that we deliver it. And I believe that uh, when we get involved with proper social mobilization, we can go ahead. The adherence to the protocols and the, the guidelines still remain a major challenge in Ashanti region. So we want all of you to support us. Let us advocate. Let us do social mobilization. Let us communicate so that people will adhere to the protocols. More importantly, wearing of the face mask, the social distancing, and then the hand hygiene protocol. Now that Ebola and Marburg is around us, we'll have to make sure that even the hand hygiene protocol is more enforced. Because apart from the COVID, it will also protect us from any infection, just like the one that uh, we are hearing is happening in Ivory Coast and other places. Oheming Teria joins us with more. Now, Oheming, um, you've been observing the vaccination process and you were at this news conference, Oheming. What more is there to report? Yes, uh, Daniel, there are four uh, districts currently uh, where the exercise is ongoing. And out of these four, there are 36 uh, centers, you know, providing the vaccination uh, care to uh, residents in these uh, districts. Uh, these districts are what health authorities describe as hotspots for COVID-19 in the region. They have been the driving force uh, behind COVID-19 figures in the Ashanti mm. region. Mm. Uh, let me also say that Dr. Emmanuel Kojote Nkran, the Ashanti Regional Health mm. Director, uh, has been touching on the fact that the region has, for the past uh, three weeks, you know, experienced uh, some marginal decline in COVID-19 cases. Mm. Uh, three weeks ago, uh, the region had over 1,335 cases, mm. but as of now, uh, the region is doing in the region of 800 uh, plus uh, cases. Uh, so he says the health authorities in the region has been doing everything possibly right. Uh, for instance, they've been doing contact tracing uh, with sensitization campaign to the people, and then as well as uh, testing more. And with this, uh, he believes that if the uh, residents in the region will support uh, the effort of health officials uh, by adhering to COVID-19 safety protocols, especially uh, with hand washing uh, under running water with soap, and then the wearing of face masks, then this will go a long way uh, to help bring the COVID-19 cases down, especially in the third wave uh, being experienced in the Ashanti region. But despite the numbers, you know, cases coming down, the region in the last uh, three weeks has recorded an increase in the number of COVID-19 fatalities here in Ashanti region. Uh, the region has done not less than 47 deaths or has seen 47 deaths in the last uh, three weeks, uh, bringing the number of COVID-19 uh, deaths in the Ashanti region to over 394, an indication that, yes, uh, the regional health director also touched on the fact that uh, COVID uh, is still real and is killing people, so residents in the region should be worried and also uh, adhere to the safety uh, protocols being uh, put out by health authorities. Right. Now, Ohiming, away from the general safety protocols that have to be um, administered by the public, what about the vaccine rollouts proper? We understand 11,000 different people have been given the jabs. Um, run us through the latest that we have as of now. 
Yes, with the 11,000 people who have so far been vaccinated in the Ashanti region, uh, the region uh, received 50,400 uh, doses. Uh, so if we have 11,000 people already vaccinated, then it means with the last uh, you know, few days uh, to come, there's likelihood that there will be shortage of the vaccine. If, for instance, uh, people decide to troop and rush uh, to these uh, centers. The regional health director also touched on the fact that, yes, we don't have enough doses in the region. So who are, who, those who are at home uh, waiting uh, for the last hour uh, before they can be vaccinated should take note that we don't have enough doses. And uh, they, should, they wouldn't be, you know, he wouldn't be surprised uh, to see that uh, the vaccines which mm. are already in short uh, supply uh, cannot uh, feed uh, the entire population or those who need them. He mentioned the fact that there has been some uh, lapses on the part of the citizenry. Uh, for instance, uh, he mentioned there was a health worker uh, who did not take uh, opportunity of the first and second uh, phases of the vaccination exercise to be vaccinated. And he's among the uh, 47 people who have died in the last uh, three weeks. Uh, so he's encouraging people uh, to be vaccinated and uh, as at this morning, when I monitored from these uh, vaccination centers, uh, in some instances, there were no queues at all. Uh, people were, the places were empty with health officials, you know, waiting for people to come and then for them to be vaccinated. Uh, so he has also, you know, throw uh, more light on the fact that those who receive the AstraZeneca, you know, first shot of the AstraZeneca vaccine, are also out there. They are anxious uh, to be vaccinated uh, with this uh, Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Right. And it's something that the uh, regional health director spoke against, that he will encourage those uh, in that uh, you know, uh, regard to wait for their turn. Mm. They shouldn't be anxious. Mm. They shouldn't go uh, to these uh, vaccination centers to be vaccinated uh, because they don't know what the effect could be on their health. Thank you very much, Ohimeng Teria, for bringing us those details from the Ashanti region. Meanwhile, patronage is picking up at various um, vaccination centers here in Accra. Amiyasi Nyamiche Thompson has been um, following this, this issue, and we'll bring you that interview with her very shortly in the bulletin. Um, right, Mamiesi has joined us. Mamiesi, right, uh, what's the latest from where you are now? Mamisi, can you hear me? Right, Mamisi, I'm Mr. Thompson there, who is currently reporting. Earlier on Joy News Day, she came to us from the Presbyterian Church at Choco, where she spoke with an 84-year-old and a 53-year-old who were very excited at the opportunity to vaccinate themselves. Um, apparently, you are asked to go through the process and you are asked to take a seat for some 10 minutes and relax a bit. This 53-year-old had some, um, she was feeling feverish. So she was feeling some pains immediately after, but she said she was feeling better. Mamezi has rejoined her, rejoined us now. Mamezi. Behind me, the process is going on smoothly with several hundreds here to get vaccinated. I'm here with Dire Deputy Director of Health Services, uh, of Deputy Director of Nursing Services, Madam Ode, Christiana Ode is with me here to tell us how the process has gone so far. Madam, thank you so much for coming on Joy News. So far, how has the process been? The process has been very smooth and it's still ongoing. We haven't had any incidences. We'll have all our needed logistics and vaccines. And so far, so good. How many have, have been vaccinated so far? Presently, we have done 110. 110 has been vaccinated, but we still have 110 in the queue and still giving numbers. And so we may exceed even 250 today. Yes. So when you look at the way the process has gone, has it um, been smooth? Have people adhered to the safety protocols that have been, you know, put in place to ensure that the Delta variant doesn't spread? Yes, yes, we are adhering strictly to the COVID protocols. They wash their hands and then they have their mask on. The only challenge is that 
the sitting arrangement is three on a bench. We don't have enough benches here. But I believe even the three, there's some space in between them, and it's quite good. Yes, so they're adhering to the protocols. And so, as you heard from the Deputy Director of Nurses for Public Health at the Accra Metro, the process has been going smoothly. We are currently here, um, as you can see behind me, several people who are already in queue waiting to be vaccinated. And so you realize that the education has really gone down well for this one, Daniel. Right, um, Mamesi, thank you very much for joining us with those details. Right, you're live on Joy News today. Now, remember that we are in the third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic in the country, which is seeing a very unique characteristic. We are seeing more deaths and a decreasing number of active cases. Um, reports from the Ashanti region, as we just heard Dr. Emmanuel Tinkwai say, is that we've seen 47 deaths in that, in that region. We've seen cases rise in the Bono and in the Volta region. And uh, also, most uniquely, in the, in the greater Accra region, which of course is known as the hotspot, um, we have seen the active cases and the number of deaths go up. We're going to take you to the dashboard of the Ghana Health Service very, very shortly. And when we go there, we will be looking at the regional breakdown, the number of active cases, um, which is now at about 6,200. The fact that the total number of cases is just around 110,000. And the number of um, recoveries has also crossed 100,000. We'll bring you that shortly. But the advisor and former chairman of the National Coalition of NGOs in Health, Dr. Gabriel Benaku, says government should involve stakeholders in the implementation of Agenda 111 in order to avoid the abandoning of projects in the future. He says it is important that these projects do not end up like the over 55 hospitals started by the former president, Mahama, which had been abandoned. He was speaking after Information Minister Kocho Okonkroma announced that President Ekufado will on Tuesday break ground for the much-anticipated construction of 111 hospitals. Kojo Okonkroma on Sunday revealed 88 different parcels of land have been secured for the construction of 101 districts, six regional, and two new psychiatric hospitals. In Ghana, we have not addressed the political aspect of health. How are stakeholders properly engaged? When you secure funding and you put up the facility and you are not able to get the stakeholders to buy in, the mm. facility will be waste. Mm. And that is what has happened in the mm. previous government. From Gates, we all know, from Rolling, from Kukuo, from the late Professor Mills. We have seen infrastructures are still there without use. So that is because we have not used the crucial aspect of health. Okay. We have not involved stakeholders. So okay. they are not part of the title of the facility. By the time I was living, there were more than 55 health facilities at district and sub-district and community level that were completed by the federal government and they were not being used by the current government. It's just because wow. we have not sociologically involved stakeholders. We have not recognized the other political parties' contribution to health. We have not recognized the private sector contribution to health. So government tends to initiate new projects without completing health facilities. Okay. And I think as a country, we need to change that myth, that perception, and that uh, attitude of not using facilities built by previous government. Now, like any other day, she had seen her two-year-old daughter off um, to school. And Naomi Ado, who lives in a slum near the Graphic Road, expected the little girl to return home safely in the company of her schoolmates. But well, the story was different. Whilst returning home, the girl was hit by a vehicle and run over by another. This is one of the many stories in the latest edition of the, jo of the Joy News Hotline documentary, titled Crushed Young. Producer of the documentary, Seth Kwame Boating, shared this excerpt. Today, I am out on the graphic road here in Accra to meet a young woman 
who has been a victim of road traffic accident. She is called Naomi Ado. She lives around the Graphic Railway Slam, 600 meters from the Graphic Road Highway. Tears build up in her eyes, and even before I engage her, she breaks down. Uh, On that day, Naomi saw her eight-year-old class two daughter off to school, hoping they would reunite later in the day. This, however, became a mere wish. traffic and you are nowhere who said into old chairman, not cabin so every overhead, no so air sunny, and a born and a rash in the course with a mini course with a drone. I say, on that day, Naomi was so sick that she wasn't able to rush to the Kolebu teaching hospital to see her daughter. On that catcher, we collapse here. It is very tiana behind an hour for. And I'm beside and I was you see. Zoom in and then beneath you are made. When the first car hit her, a second one ran over her at the graphic road traffic light intersection. According to hospital records from the Kolobo Teaching Hospital, her pupils had dilated and was bleeding from the nose and mouth by the time they reached the hospital. She also had a deep cut on her forehead. Her dream of becoming a journalist ended right there. When we start mentioning children in this society, children from this level of society and what their, their loss means to their families, then we probably would, would start setting up. For example, if it's an only child, for example, if it is a child born out of so many years of trying to have a child or a child it's been four and today at 4 p.m crushed young will be premiered in Kumasi. it's a story about how many children are losing their lives to road accidents let's cross over to the ashanti regional capital where preparations are underway for the premiere joining us now is the producer of that documentary Seth Kwame Boating. Seth, um, first of all, great work on putting this together. I see you're standing in the hall that the premiere will be taking place. Yes, I'm right here, and I can say that we are all set. Um, everything is intact. We've arranged all the chairs, expecting uh, that the number of people who have, uh, have invited will show up, and we have taken indications a number of them will come, so we are here waiting. But all is set, and uh, we are waiting that for we're going to start um, the show. Great, great. Tell us about the atmosphere, um, even in anticipation of this premiere. Uh, I think this is a documentary that has shocked many, um, especially here in Kumasi. You know, I've been here for the past week and we've been talking about this. And we've ignited the interest of many people. We've made people appreciate the need to be extra careful and to go the extra mile and take care of the young ones, for example, this morning I was on Love FM and the discussions were had, the cause that came in, people were worried that we were losing approximately six children every week. And they were asking, what can we do to take care of them well? So people are expectant, uh, people are not, some are not too sure if they can watch because children are involved. But we've, uh, we've assured them that it's a must watch, so they have to try and watch. And generally people are expectant uh, because they hope to learn lessons from this and, and also learn how to drive well uh, going forward. I'm expecting as well, Seth. All the best later today. You're live on Joy News today. Daryl, how is next with business? <music> Thank you.
Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Prices of petroleum products are expected to increase this week. However, some of the major oil marketing firms have indicated plans to absorb them. But is this sustainable as this will be the third time since last month the oil marketing companies have done this? Well, here's George Raffi with the latest. The increase is based on the price list released by the bulk oil distribution companies indicating how they're going to sell the various products to the oil marketing companies for the next two weeks. If you look at the numbers, diesel is expected to go down by some 1% per litre. However, petrol and LPG are expected to be increased. LPG, on the other hand, should go up by more than 1% per kilogram. However, some of the major oil marketing companies have indicated that they will absorb the expected increase. This will be the third time since last month that prices should have gone up by under 1%, but these firms absorbed it. But some of them say this will depend on the actions of market leader Guo. But there are some who have also raised sustainability issues, and whether this practice will absorb prices is a good move, because this could open the door for huge hikes in the future. However, some have also argued that the city's stability over the past months might have aided this move. Therefore, the current pressure on the Ghana city, maybe consumers, should brace themselves for some huge hikes in the coming months. There are currently more than a hundred oil marketing companies in the country. But often developments are mainly influenced by the top six firms in the industry. Now, a professor of tourism at the Cape Coast University, um, Technical University rather, is calling for more attention to be paid to Ghana's tourism sector to enable the sector attract the needed investments and contribute massively to Ghana's gross domestic product. Now, according to Professor Samuel Benjamin Ousuminta, the tourism sector is bedeviled with numerous problems such as lack of funds for attracting development, inaccessibility uh, to some sites and existence of poor services at the sites. Now, speaking at his inaugural lecture on the post-COVID-19 impact of tourism and the prospects in Africa at the university, Professor Ousuminta indicated Ghana stands a huge chance of making it big using tourism as a viable tool. Richard Kulinyako has more. Before the outbreak of COVID-19, Professor Samuel Benjamin Ousuminta indicated the tourism industry had generated about 10% of the gross domestic product and has shown some resilience in the employment sector in Africa. In Ghana, though the tourism industry has been the fourth highest exchange earner after minerals, timber and cocoa, the country earned about 2.655 million in receipt of international tourism arrivals in 2018, according to the Ghana Tourism Authority. Professor Usu Minta says the country could make a huge impact in the tourism sector post-COVID-19 period should lift services be replaced with critical actions to harness the growth of the sector. This will depend to a greater extent on the degree of improvement in quality service delivery at attractions and facilities as a result of improved tourism education. Harnessing the potential of tourism in Africa as a developmental tool will therefore require education and skills training of service providers for the provision of quality tourism services at the nation's tourism. However, the tourism sector is bedeviled by numerous problems such as lack of funds for attraction development, inaccessibility, and existence of poor services as these attractions and facilities. This calls for higher investment in education and vocational training, especially for tourism service providers to render quality service to their patrons and tourists. As an important export product, tourism is also known to grow and to increase export revenues, the golden ends which are controlled externally. He is suggesting the country could revolutionize the sector by generating the interest of children and the youth in the tourism sector, so lots of positive outcomes would be harnessed. To fully implement the tourism policy of Ghana, the various MMDAs should be encouraged to open district offices in the various assemblies to augment the activities of the regional offices of the GTA to ensure efficient and effective supervision 
of tourism facilities in their localities. The government must increase the budgetary allocation to the GTA for effective work not only in the regions but also in the MMDAs instead of giving only lip service to improving the tourism industry in the country. And that's your business update. More news on our website, myjoinline.com forward slash business. Coming up next, sports. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Showbiz here on Joy News today. Now, have you ever wondered how it feels like to be a celebrity? What could be uh, the hardest and good things of being one? Here is a sample of opinions of some Ghanaian celebrities giving us an insight to the celebrity life. What is the hardest thing of being a celebrity? Well, um, the hardest thing is uh, sometimes you don't feel free to do whatever you want to do. You know, um, sometimes people forget we are human. You know, um, we have emotions. We, we are hu normal human beings. Sometimes somebody can say something and then um, the person gets to you. You react and then you are in trouble. A normal person there reacts, the person is free. You know, um, that is the most difficult thing uh, we, we face. And, um, the good thing? The good thing, like, everything has good um, advantages and disadvantages. You know, advantages, uh, we get a lot of opportunities. We go to uh, places um, comfortably. We, like, we, we get some things easily, you know, which we also do appreciate it. Like, um, to summarize everything, I would say in life we have disadvantages and advantages. So that's all I can say. Am I a celebrity? Oh yeah. Um invasion of privacy. You know, I'm single, I can't go on a date. Because every time I go on a date, there's a secret picture or something and then I'm being tagged with the wrong person. Yeah. They are spoiling my kids. <laughs> You know, I think it's an invasion of privacy, but that's it, that's it. Yeah. But, yeah. But there's a beauty to that, you know, being a celebrity. There's a beautiful part of it. There's yeah. a good part. Yeah. We want to know. I mean, the part where people appreciate and love you, you know, and I've, I've found a lot of people who have come to appreciate and love me for who I am today, and I really love them back. Like, it's amazing. Sometimes, you know you don't have money. Charlie, to call someone and tell the person, yo, I mean, watch them get crap. Which me have one minute? The person know you a star, and they think you being a star, you have it all to yourself. So sometimes that's the hardest part of our life that we meet, we talk. Sometimes, Charlie, you are investing your money somewhere and you don't have anything, but who to call? That yo, Charlie, me who there? But because the name star and you are everywhere, they think you have everything to yourself. So to me, it's the hardest thing that you know a lot of stars are facing. But we just don't talk, that's why. But, so, but there's a good side to being a celebrity. What's that good side? The good side, looking fly. <laughs> Coming to accept the fact that everybody knows you or feel like they know you, your personal life and everything about you. and. Sometimes you forget, but you have to remind yourself that people know you. So that's one of the hardest things, personally. But, but right? yeah, but for me, it, it's easy. It's easier now. It gets easier the more, yeah, but by the day. Some benefits, you know, some benefits. Sure, sure. It's a yeah. It's a well-paying lifestyle. So why not? Mm, the perception society has for you. Mm. You know, they think once you're on set, you're on screen every day, then everything is all right. But then. Mm. We also have our problems sometimes. We have our issues, and so, but you know, it's it's exciting. I think it's it's worth it. What's good about being a celebrity? Yeah, good about about it to me, KK was was like you know I'm famous, and the famous open gates for me, being a celebrity, traveling to um. Imagine a person from Mangwasi, somebody like KK Fusu, will be away to me and university. Mm. We have a lecturer. But being a celebrity, it will open the gates, doors for even the president to call on you. Meanwhile, investor Kevin Jaguapa is calling for support for Ghanaian entertainers. He noted the industry has a lot of talents that needs all the push financially to excel. 
he made this call at his plush birthday bash. The entertainment industry is something um, I love to support uh, the industry, especially some of the musicians. And um, I don't want to all the time show my face, okay. but I support them back door. So anytime I want to celebrate my birthday, they come to support. Yeah. What do you make of the industry? You know that all the time we have people in the industry calling for support for you know musicians for actors and all i'm sure you've been listening to it you're doing your part yeah. what would you say to other industry players or people like yourself um, in terms of support for industry to me um the industry needs to be pushed we really need to support them because um they are doing well. We have a lot of good talent in this country. But the truth is, because they don't have good support, so they can't go far. But to me, I believe that we all have to push them, contribute a lot of money into it, or push money into it, to make sure that they go far, they go international. Because to me, I love music, and I love football. So I don't play with football and music. So these people, they need um, a good attention. What is the attention? It's like we have to pay attention to them. Because if you listen to the artists performing, this is a very good music. But how, why can't we put to them? So to me, I will urge everybody to support uh, the industry. Now it was a night filled with excitement as media personalities, bloggers, friends, and loved ones converged at the base launch to be part of a private listening session for highly spiritual artists. Mr. Drew, the maiden album title Alpha, according to the artist, means dominance. The 12 track album features musicians Kelvin Boy, Kidi, Rebecca, Nigeria's artist Shay, 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 and others. Let's go. Shay and others. CEO of highly spiritual music, Kewa, expressed his excitement and also explained how he mixed all the 12 songs. Well, I think that it brings me great joy and I feel blessed. Um, I feel blessed that when we began, we knew where we were going, even though the path was a bit, a bit you know, unstable. Uh, we are here and I always say that this is our starting point because this is where I want us to get to so we can fly. And so, um, I didn't produce any song on the album, but I mixed and mastered the album. Kewa, right there. And that'll be all for Showbiz here on Joy News today, Daniel. Many thanks for bringing us Showbiz. Anytime. This is where we wrap up this bulletin of Joy News today. And Becky? For more news, log on to myjoyonline.com. My name is Daniel Dazia. Up next is Charles Aiting. Well, the marketplace. Be good. Bye.